Greetings, Mr. Rogues here, yet again reacting to a list. What, do you think I'm gonna make my own lists? Uh, oh no, that's way too much work. Anyway, today's list is 10 of the worst Marvel villains of all time by Wes Walkett on Goliath. I really have no clue uh, what kind of villains are gonna be on here. I don't really know who's considered the worst Marvel villains. I would be more familiar with a list of the worst DC villains. Anyway, let's just jump right into it and let's see what kind of crap Marvel has to offer. It's gonna be interesting. Here's the read up. It seems that for every Doctor Doom or Magneto that the Marvel Universe spawns, there are countless other dud supervillains that don't quite make the grade. The Beetle, the Slug, Purple Man. Chances are you haven't heard of any of these characters because their powers and motives are so lame that the only crime committed was the writers thinking it was a good idea to make them in the first place. So before you go thinking that Stan Lee and the rest of Marvel's creative talent can do no wrong, have a look at this list of some of the worst villains they've ever come up with. Really? Purple Man? Isn't he considered to be a good villain? I don't know, I'm not the Marvel, 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 Marvel expert here. So number 10 is Matador. Matador. Who is Matador? Well, since these lazy bastards don't supply us with a picture, I'm gonna have to add a picture myself of Matador. Uh, more work. When you're a famous Spanish bullfighter, I thought I didn't have to do any work for this video. And all your fans turn on you for being cruel to animals. What choice do you have but to become evil and use all your bullfighting knowledge to take it revenge on mankind? Well, that's exactly what Matador did. By using his big red cape, he's able to obstruct the vision of people driving armored trucks so that they swerve and crash, thereby allowing him to steal whatever it is the vehicle is carrying. Unfortunately for him, his luck ran out when he tried to use this trick against Daredevil and it had no effect, since Daredevil is already blind in the first place. Okay, is this is why this dude is so bad? Because he tried to blind a blind dude? A bullfighter themed villain does sound pretty blame to be honest. Number 9 is Boomerang. Boomerang, I recently talked about him in my Spidey ranking tier thingy. As funny as it sounds, this guy was actually an opponent of the Hulk. Okay, so not the Spider-Man. The Boomerang first appeared in issue 81 of Tales to Astonish as a world-class baseball pitcher who accepted bribes and got tossed from the major leagues. But, thanks to his amazing throwing arm, he soon attracted the attention of a criminal organization who enlisted him to take on authorities and superheroes using weaponized boomerangs and discs. Boomerang is more or less the cockroach of the Marvel Universe. He refuses to die, but isn't worth anyone's time or effort to deal with. I don't know, he doesn't sound that terrible. I mean, it's Marvel's Captain Boomerang. What's so awful about him? Number eight. Paste Pot Pete. We've all heard of Paste Pot Pete. Sure, he eventually renamed himself the Trapster, but when he first burst onto the scene, he was known as Paste Pot Pete. That is a pretty corny name. The scientist who dressed like a homeless French painter and carried a squirt gun full of fireproof super glue. That sounds pretty nasty, actually. I wouldn't be i be hit by that. Rather than start a business selling miracle adhesives, Paste Pot Pete felt a better career choice would be to use his glue to rob banks and steal missiles. Well, who wouldn't? I would certainly go in that route. Not to worry though, he was easily foiled numerous times by the Fantastic Four, who pretty much only had to knock over his bucket of paste and hand over to the authorities. Really? Was it that easy? I haven't read these stories, so I don't know. Maybe it was. Maybe it was just a one-page comic. Not sure what else he expected when his own real power was sticking things to other things. And again, no pictures. I gotta find pictures of all of these, giving me more work. Goliath, you... Seven! Leapfrog, I've heard of him. Leapfrog is another two-bit daredevil villain who adopted a ridiculous amphibian persona using an exoskeleton suit equipped with built-in coils that enable him to jump great distances. You have to wonder if all the most laughable 
What? You have to wonder if all the most laughable looking criminals are partial to fighting Daredevil just because he's the only superhero who can actually see how incredibly foolish they look. Yeah, ho 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 ho, very funny, very funny. Nevertheless, Leapfrog suffered a number of humiliating defeats at the hands of Daredevil, Spider-Man and Iron Man even, and was eventually tossed in a slammer where he had time to contemplate why he thought putting on a frog costume would allow him to beat Iron Man. I don't know either. I don't know either. Number six is Critical Mass! No idea who that is. Arnie Gunderson, cool name though, bro, was one of Peter Parker's fourth grade classmates, who has, in the time since then, bulked up considerably and now goes by the appropriate name Critical Mass, inventive. Other than being incredibly fat, I thought he was full of muscle, okay? So he's just fat. Critical Mass has developed a mutant power to project an explosive force from his body. You mean he farts? Mm -hmm. In any case you're thinking he blows his enemies away with furious flower flats? Well, you see, we're on the same page here. You'll be disappointed to find out that he normally fires his power from his fingertips. That does sound pretty boring. Another fingertip guy. When this fat foe bands together a group of baddies to kidnap a powerful mutant named Mary, Spider-Man and Wolverine stepped in to foil his plans, but during the confrontation, Critical Mass put a gun to Mary's head, which caused her to unleash her mutant power, thereby destroying the warehouse they were fighting in and supposedly killing all the bad guys, including Critical Mass and good goddamn riddance with this guy. Oh well, at least we still have the blob as a token fat guy villain. Are you fat shaming, Goliath? Number five is Thumbelina. Okay, Thumbelina. Thumbelina is a Marvel villain. Speaking of fat villains, more fat shaming. Here's another one named Thumbelina. She's fat too? I assume she would be tiny. As part of the Mutant Liberation Front, Thumbelina used her mutant powers to shrink down her considerable body size and engage in all sorts of espionage missions. And even though she wasn't as ruthless as a lot of other mutants in the Mutant Liberation Front, that didn't stop Iceman from turning in her into a giant frozen popsicle and taking her into custody when the X-Men raided the group's headquarters in an effort to stop them from committing global acts of terror. Shame on you, Thumbelina. A shrinking fat lady with one of the worst haircuts the Marvel Universe has ever seen. Well, I guess I'll see that later when I add the picture. You have to see that horrible haircut of hers. That's pretty much Thumbelina in a nutshell, okay? Fat, shrinking, bad haircut, okay? Well, who's next? Number four is... White Rat! <laughs> Number three is Asbestos Lady! Asbestos Lady? There, there, there's an Asbestos Lady? I knew there was an Asbestos Dude, but the Lady too? Talk about an unfortunate choice in costume materials! <laughs> asbestos Lady first appeared in comics back in 1947, when Asbestos was at its height in popularity. Ah, oh, poor suckers. Since asbestos is extremely resistant to heat and flames, asbestos lady was naturally an adversary for the human torch, and even created asbestos made bullets so she could puncture his fiery defenses. However, as the hazards of long time asbestos exposure became better known, asbestos lady fell victim herself to the Carcinogenic, sarcinogenic fiber, and in 1990 she finally died of cancer. Good on Marvel for teaching us all about the dangers of asbestos, though. Well, 
Can't argue with that. So what happened to Asbestos Man? Did he also die of cancer? Probably. Number two is the second worst Marvel villain of all time, according to Goliath, is... Stilt Man! Oh, good old Stilt Man. It's so tired and old to hate on Stilt Man. To be fair though, I don't know how old this article is. It could be 10 years old for all I know. Daredevil really does seem to attract the worst villains. Yeah, yeah, kinda. His old villains. Mm, there are some good ones, but a lot of them were... Mm, but the price for the corniest adversary he's ever gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with would have to go to Stilt Man. Good old Stilty. This cruddy criminal figured if he made himself a suit with some high-rising telescopic legs, then he would be an unstoppable force capable of pulling out some daring above-ground floor heists. I mean, it is a really stupid gimmick. Walking around on these super tall stilts to reach high places, I mean, you can just tip them over. Invent a jetpack instead, ya yeah, Nimrod. It's still unclear we whether or not Stiltman was always a joke, or if the writers originally intended him to pose a serious threat. Oh, come on, we all know they did. They took everything serious back then. In any case, he rose to fight Daredevil on several occasions, and even went so far as to almost kill the man without fear when he quickly shortened his legs to duck under a high-flying tackle attack. Of course, he's always easily defeated in the end, since all you need to do to render him powerless is to push him over. Well, that's what I just said. He's literally a pushover. Oh, cringe. Oh, I was cringe. <coughs> cringe as hell. Not even my jokes are that cringe. And as if one crazy character on stilts wasn't enough, the maniacs at Marvel also went so far as to create the copycat villain Lady Stilt Man. Uh, is that really her name? Are you just making a dumb joke here? Is that really her name? Lady Stilt Man? What is this stilt lady? Lady Stilts. Anyway, finally we have the number one worst Marvel villain of all time. Let's see what they have for us. Let's see the worst that Marvel can do. Hold my hand. Number one! Egghead. Uh, uh, the egghead bullying just does not stop. Not even when we go over to Marvel. It continues there as well. Yes, egghead. This is of course not the Vincent Price egghead from Batman, but another egghead, an Ant-Man villain. Sporting some imposing girth and mis sh mis happen shapen I can't English. Cranial features Egghead appeared in Tales to Astonish 38 as the rival and eventually arch nemesis of Ant-Man, Hank Pym. One of Egghead's most memorable evil schemes involved him taking control of ants and using them to steal information so he could devise a formula that prevents aging, okay? And if you're thinking that doesn't really sound evil at all, well, you might be right, okay? But he also teamed up with a bunch of other geniuses to steal documents from the library of Alexandria in an attempt to uh, learn about things and uh, get smarter. Okay, that's not too bad either. Apparently, I can but just a guy who loved books and wanted to find a cure for aging. Okay, so why is he so bad? Why do you put him as your number one here, then? Too bad Hawkeye had to kill him by shooting an arrow into the barrel of his gun and causing it to misfire when he threatened to shoot Ant-Man in the back. Yeah, too bad, too bad, we lost this guy, this brilliant genius guy. Thanks, Hawkeye. Well, that was... That was kind of strange, kind of a strange experience here. I don't... I don't really know what makes him qualify to even be here, I mean... Uh, 
you, you don't even really make snarky jokes about them like you did with the other ones. So what you're trying to say is that because he wasn't evil enough, he's uh, the worst Marvel villain of all time? Uh, I don't even know, I don't even know, but needless to say, I'm pretty sure a lot of you will heavily disagree with this list. As for me, I can't disagree with it too much because I don't know much about most of these characters. Uh, White Rabbit. Oof. She's an A-lister, goddammit. She should be in the A-list. She should be in the movie. Anyway, let me know down in the comments what you thought of this list and let me also know which uh, Marvel villains you think are the worst of all time. And of course, as always, Arkham Asylum awaits you in the next video. Bye.